Hej det er Grisjending og velkommen til Grundekanal plus mye mer. Vi blir å snakke om alt mellom himmel og jord som skaper Grundes suksess og skaper det aller beste mest rocka liv. Så la oss hoppe i dagens episode. Hey, this is Gri and welcome back. Today you're going to meet Lauren Savoy. Lauren is, she was at least, a super hot superstar in every magazine, not only in Norway, but also in the world. And then now she's living this quiet TV and film producer life in Brooklyn. And what I love about Lauren is that she's such a hard working woman and then transit from being a music writer to a TV producer. And wherever she goes, she just goes to the top. She's ambitious and she's a hard working woman. So what I love about you know being an entrepreneur is that you have to work hard it's success is not given to you you actually have to work through the hard times and this is what i want to inspire you that there's no shortcut to the top it's just hard work and lauren is one of the hard working women that inspires me every day enjoy Hi there, I'm here with Lauren Savoy. Welcome Lauren, thank, thank you. you so much for being here. Um, so you went from a crazy pop star life and now to the quiet life in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> How has that been for you? How's this transition been? Um, I think it's, it's been great. I think it's been very good for both my husband and myself because in America it's so easy to just blend in with everybody and it's you're no you're no big deal and yeah. I think that's very good for the mentally <laughs> for the mentally yeah so how long have you been in Brooklyn two years two years, two years. and it's so much different than Soho and Norway yeah but you know I was in Norway this summer and I had another like I, I fell in love with Norway all over again. Oh, really? It's really. I think Oslo and the people, it's a fantastic city. Yeah. It's really, and it's growing so much. I know, it's so changed since I moved to. How long have you been away? Um, we come back every summer. Okay. So I see that kind of growth, that year, what's happened in a year. Yeah. And I'm always surprised. But in particular, coming back this summer, I was really very taken with the city. Yeah. So what do you think is the difference between the Norwegian mentality and the um, America? Oh, because you have God. both. You like Boston and New York and then you lived up in the country in Norway too. Oslo and Yeah. Yeah. Our son went to Barnahaga. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we were there for some years. <laughs> yeah. But we always I mean we always lived outside. But we he would like spend like, you know, the summers in Barnahaga. And, yeah. Um but I think in a, to a large extent, Norway is just a much more mature country. How? I think Americans are, it's, it, if you were going to say that we're, the countries are people, yeah. America is an adolescent. It's oh. filled with raging hormones. Oh, it's like 15 <laughs> years old, you know what I mean? It talks <laughs> back at you, it, will, it might push you by accident. You know, it's filled with hormones. Yeah. And Norway's an adult. Wow, I actually see it the other way around. Really? Yeah, that's interesting you say that because every time I come home to Norway, I get pushed at the subway and pushed and they're so rude. And while I come here, they're like, excuse me, sorry, oh, how are you? So I... Okay, I know what you're saying, actually. <laughs> yeah. I do, I know what yeah. you're saying. But that's like, um, that's like the, the, the social greeting, like that yeah. superficial yeah. level. Norwegians are a bit abrupt, uh, yeah. comparatively, yeah. right? And yeah. Americans are so friendly. Yeah. And Norwegians always think they're too friendly. Oh, it's yeah, fake. Yeah, yeah. Haven't you heard that? Yeah, I do, but I don't think it's fake. I've become like that too, and I. Think that, um, we are just raised to see what's good in other people. Like here, you get um, like a training in school, like see how to see other people. Yeah. And and more curious. Yeah. Well, uh, and at home, I'm more um, in my little cubic cope, what right. do you call it? Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. But politically, which yeah. is kind of what I'm talking yeah. about, Yes. Norway yes. has, a, their, your political system yeah. is so much more. I do agree, I do, yeah. agree, I do agree. So what's your up to now? I mean, you, went, you were a singer and a songwriter and a video producer, and now you're into TV shows, <laughs> and that's so, it's, it's a transition career. Yeah, I, I like to change. 
Yeah. You know, I, I, same with where I live. We're, we're always moving. I kind of don't like to get stuck. I feel like time goes so fast when you never change it up. Your life is over like that. Yeah. But when you change, things tend to slow down a bit because it's all new experiences. And I love learning new stuff. So yes, I started, I, originally I want, this is what I wanted to do. And I got sort of sidetracked. Um, so the last couple of years I've started writing and it's, come, it's going well. I, I made a short film that won a lot of awards. Awards, a lot of them. Yeah. But congratulations. Thank That's you. That's amazing. I had my heart kind of broken this summer though. Why? I had written a, with a friend of mine, Hallie, um, we had written a TV pilot for a television series and had applied to Sundance. They have a very prestigious writer's lab. And we had made it all the way to, the, we, were, we were a finalist for down from like thousands to 20. And from 20 they picked 10 and we got cut. Oh no. Yeah. I hate that. I hate so, that. It's, so, so it's not always that you kind of do something and then you go and you know, all the no. way to the top. So you have like, Smackdowns. So many smacks in the face. Yeah. It's not even funny. And, and how do you deal with that? This one was hard. Yeah. This took the wind out of my sails because it, was, it would have meant so much yeah. in America. Um, and it was, we had gone so far and we were one of the last to be rejected. So I really felt like, oh my God, I think maybe we're actually in. Um, so it took me a couple of days. And then I came up with a television series that I really want to make. Wow. And that's the, and I wrote, a, I wrote another pilot, and I think that's the best thing you can do, is just, as hard as it is, just go back to work. Yeah. And keep, you know, you have to just keep trying. Yeah. So how have you dealt with, because you and Paul was like in every freaking magazine you opened for a while, <laughs> right. and now it's, it's a long time ago. <laughs> it's a lot, but still, it's, it's, it's a transition, and, and you go from one transition to another in work-wise too, mm. and, and how do you have the, the bravery to do something new? Because many people live a life, and especially my, my entrepreneurs, mm. they, they want to do new stuff, but they're so afraid to fail yeah. that they kind of um, create their own prison. I, I totally understand what you mean. And it is, in a way, you have to be stupid enough. Oh, really? <laughs> is that it? I'm serious. You have to just say to yourself, I'm not even going to look at all the possibilities of failure. I'm not mm -hmm. going to worry what people think. Mm -hmm. I never have ever cared what people have thought. Really? I, I don't know why that is. It's weird. I want that. So teach me. What do you do to just stop the outer world? Because, yeah, you just, you know, I think, you know, it's, this is sort of what I'm talking about. I've asked some people, like, do you like yourself? And a lot of people surprise me with their answer. And they'll say, no, really? many, many, many oh, You should start asking. I'll start asking, do you like yourself? Do you like yourself? Yeah. And the thing is, I've always liked myself. Wow. And I think if you like yourself, you don't care as much about what other people think. Because you're, you, you know you're OK. Yeah. So I think you have to work on that first. You yeah. have to first like get to that point where you think that anything you're going to do, no matter what somebody else says, yeah. is OK. You, so yeah. that's not self-confidence, but that's no. kind of a self-respect, self-love? Yeah, self, yeah. no, self-respect. Self-respect. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And how do you build that? <laughs> <laughs> Just comes natural. I think it starts early. Yeah. I, uh, it's a good question, because I, I, honestly, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's a, you have to, I guess you start do. it's a bit like you are what you do. Yeah. Start doing things that give you self-worth. And one of those things that give you self-worth would be not listening to what other people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and actually being dumb enough, I act, really mean this when I say being dumb enough, to do stuff that people think, oh my God, you're going to fall flat on your face. Yeah. It's like, okay, and if I do, so what? Just be brave. So just be brave and just do it. Yeah, yeah I love that slogan. I mean, that <laughs> yeah. was a genius. <laughs> I love Nike. So I, I had an interview with Eva Atling, uh, the jewelry designer, and mm. she said kind of the same thing. It's like, mm. be brave, and if you're not in there with your heart, you're going to fail anyway. So it's better yeah. doing something with your heart instead of... And isn't it better to try and fail than never... I mean, that's another like great yeah. cliche, but yeah. than never to have tried at all. That's the yeah. worst. Yeah. You're never going to regret trying, even if you fail. I don't regret applying to Sundance. It was no, great. It was, it was a fantastic great. experience. So what did you learn out of that? Um, to keep actually that, I learned that, oh, 
I'm good enough to have made, made it that far. Mm. Then I can't be that bad. My writing mm. must be good enough. It's good. You know, and, and I just have to keep trying. Yeah. I'll reapply next year. Yeah, awesome. You know? Awesome. So when you have that, you know, the other world is kind of giving you a prize for being the best one. Uh, mm. How do you, I sometimes find that uh, when I get to the top, there's only one way and that's down. How do you kind of get yourself to the next top and, and get motivated? Well, I've never gotten to the top. Ah. So I'm still climbing my way up. Well, when you get it like a, an, an awesome prize, like a best film and best director, isn't that kind of being it? Yeah, but it's, there's always and there's always another. I like that. Yeah, but I mean, but it's true. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I won a lot of awards for my short, but now I have to make a feature. Ah. So then of course, and then if you win an award for your feature, great, but then you have to win an Academy Award. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and then if you win an Academy Award, you have to have it be seen by like millions and millions of people. people. I mean, to get to that very, very top, you know, that's... Yeah. You're very ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nor in Norway, it's... For us, uh, being ambitious is kind of, if you're a woman, it's kind of a bad thing. But not if you're a man? No, I don't think so. I think I meet a lot of uh, um, ambitious men and they like, we're gonna, you know, uh, have a revenue of a million dollar. People go, yeah, and then if a woman do the same, I kind of feel it's like um, you're being greedy. That's Maybe, weird and yeah. horrible. No, it's just my, perception of things. Maybe no, it's really. wrong. Well, yeah. you know more about that than I would. Yeah. yeah. I f find it very different here in, Nor in, in the U.S., in New mm. York at least. I mean, ambition is like a positive, positive thing. Yeah. But in, in uh, like Scandinavia, it's more of a Yantelov thing. Yeah. That um, you shouldn't be ambitious. Mm. Mm. Well, for you But you are. have some very talented, ambitious people. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you too, yeah. I have to say. I, yeah. Every time I go to Norway, I'm really impressed with like the talent of the people there. I, I am too. Musically, yeah. in film, yeah. art-wise. So, I mean, it's yeah. weird. You have that Yenteloven, but yet... But then there's can't something. Keep, can't, can't keep, keep it down. Can't no. keep it down. Can't keep a good Norwegian down. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But what I, what I was trying to get to, to is like, uh, how do you... How do you express yourself through this um, ambitiousness, and how do you kind of get, you know, what's happiness for you? That's what I'm like. Is you know, ambition and happiness, I guess, is not the same thing, but well, it can be. It can be, <laughs> yeah. But how do you? I think ambition is finding a job that you really love. Mm. It's much, or rather, it's much easier to be ambitious doing something you really, really love, yeah. right? It's yes. very hard to be ambitious if you're an accountant and you hate your job. Well, oh, I have to be the best accountant. Yeah. It's like, um, so I like that. Yeah. yeah. So if, when you find the work that you really love, it's very easy to be ambitious mm. and you enjoy it. Yes. So, and what that translates for me is that I'll spend like, you know, the entire day writing because I really want to make, I really want to get somewhere yeah. and enjoy it as, as I do it. Do you have days where you hate your writing and you want to throw everything out of the window and you don't feel like it? Yeah. <laughs> and I, hate, I have problems, actually, sometimes it's very hard when you're self-motivated. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. You know, and especially now that, like, I don't have a writing partner. It's, you have to, that takes an effort. And guts. Just yeah. to actually do it. Well, yeah, and, and I'm lucky enough that I have a husband who he's working, so I don't. It's not like I need to pay that bill the next month. No. So, so. which is so lucky, and I so appreciate yeah. it. But also, you know, I need a kick in the ass sometimes. Yeah. When you were working together, I work with my husband, and I gotta say, it's like a nightmare. <laughs> it's <laughs> like we fire each other every other day. <laughs> How did you deal with it? Because you guys were working together for quite a time. You, I, I, we're actually working on a new album. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. For the first time in a long time. I mean, since 2007? Was it 2007? I yeah, I think know. it was. I yes. think it's a long time. It's a long time. Wow, and you're working together again. How's yeah. that? You're, you're going to hate me when I say it. Oh, you Oh, you love it. You're going <laughs> to hate me. Can I tell you the yeah. truth or do I lie? Me. No, be honest. We, we have very very similar taste yeah and it really isn't a problem the only the only time we have difficulty it's like because he 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 respects my writing God knows I respect his he's a much better writer than I am 
but he'll take you know whatever little bits I come with and make them sound great. Wow. Do you know? So, yeah. So I have no problems working with Paul. Oh, that's amazing. But if I disagree on production, sometimes we'll clash in production. Mm, so you do actually have somewhere you yes. clash. Oh, yes. Thank goodness. Yes. <laughs> and then we actually had a huge fight recently. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I talked too soon. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, how do you deal with that? How do you get to the next step? Um, well, I have my truth yeah. and he has his truth. My truth is that I'll say, ooh, I don't like that part. Why don't yeah. we do it this way? And he'll say, no, no, we can't do it this way. <laughs> and then like 10 minutes later, suddenly he'll be doing it my way. Oh. But I think it's his way. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. You figure it out. But so that's probably not his truth. His no. truth is probably I annoy the shit out of him <laughs> and then he fixes it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard, um, I listened to all these podcasts and there was one thing saying, um, this um, coach saying that if you, um, a good marriage, then you let your other partner have the right, yeah. be right all the time. And, and maybe that's oh, really? where we, yeah. <laughs> let the other be right. And I'm like, yikes. I'm not sure I can do this <laughs> marriage thing. <laughs> no, I give up. <laughs> so, so what's next for Laura? And I mean, do you have a TV series coming out? I have uh, I'm trying. I have a movie that's definitely going to be made. When is so, it coming out? I don't know. We're, yeah. we're finding a director. Wow. And this, this one. This is a long process. This is a really like, long process. How do you have Years. the patience for that? I'm losing my patience. Oh, you are? I had so much patience. Now I really, it's like, okay, this has to be done. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So and hopefully I, this year. This year? Yeah. Wow. No, not this year. 2016. 2000, yeah. 16. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But that's a long process from, um, and how long does it take to get an album out from you sit down and you actually come up with a song and you decide to make the album mm. and it actually hits the, um, you know, iTunes? Yeah. Uh, you know, that could be super fast, it, faster than a film. Yeah. You have the option of if, if, if you like come up with five songs in a week, you know, or t 12 songs in two weeks, which, okay, that's not going to happen, but let's say it does. Yeah. People have home studios now, so they can yeah. just record it and done. You send it out. It can be super fast, months, you know? But normally it takes like a year, year and a half. Wow. But that means that you have to be patient. It takes time. It's not yeah. like you have a product out in a week or two. No, no, no. No, you have to be patient. Yeah. And are you a patient person? No. Because you're an artist and you're an entrepreneur, so that's why I see there's like this patient thing and then it's like... Yeah. No, that was something I had to learn. Yeah. You know, and my husband, he's actually very patient. And there were times when I'd want to play music before it was ready to be played, assuming everybody could hear it. Yeah. And he was always like, no, you have to wait till it's just right. He's wow. very smart that way. Wow. Because people won't get it until it's all, all the pieces are there. So now I've learned from that. So now I'm much, I, I wait, I wait till it's right. So I've learned patience. So, so you're a multi-talented person. You have your music, you have your directing skills, and you're, you write songs. Uh, what's your favorite part? Can you choose? Yeah. Um, you know, whatever I'm doing at the moment. I love that. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. So right now, writing is my favorite part. Amazing. But when we get in the studio, it'll be like, oh, no. Writing, music is my favorite yeah. part. So out of the, um, the years you've been in, in the business, what has been the hardest part and what's the part that you kind of, oh, this is why I'm in it? Um, the hardest part is the rejection. You know, when we were doing Savoy, we had this, we were signed to Warner Brothers in America. And then the president, and we got signed through the president of Warner Brothers. I mean, uh. does that get any better? And you just assume, oh my God, it's going to be huge. Yeah. And then he got fired. Oh. <laughs> and when he got fired, we got shelved. And it took a while to get Savoy back on track. Yeah. So things like that yeah. kill you. Yeah. So the hardest part is finding that optimism to, to, to push yourself back up and say, no, keep going, keep going, keep going. And what is it in you that keeps going? The fact that if you don't keep going, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. So you have, and it, the, the, a bit, the, 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 when you even have this much of a chance, you have to keep going. Yeah. Because you can't shut that door. I love that. Yeah. 
And what's the pleasure of being an entrepreneur artist? When you actually do something so, and it succeeds. Yeah. And you, 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 all that hard work and picking yourself up from the floor when you've just been a puddle on the floor because you've been, you know, you smack down and smack down. Yeah. That feels great. Yeah. It looks like on the outside sometimes you see the success, you see the awards, and you don't see the hard work. It looks yeah. like an overnight success, and people will kind of get um, distracted by that. Mm. So, so I think it's very important to remember that even though you, you have the amazing, you know, things on the shelves, the Grammys and, and all the, the awards, there's still darn hard work and you get the smackdown yeah. all the time. Yeah, my husband, when they, before they were signed, I mean, he was starving in London. I mean, literally, yeah. he was like, his, he had to wear suspenders because all of his clothes wouldn't fit and he's skinny to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that yeah. guy was, you know, they were stealing hot dogs, truly, That's to amazing. Eat. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it, it, there's all, everyone has hard work. Yeah, and I think there's nothing such thing as um, you know overnight success. No, <laughs> it's just uh, something you read about in the books yeah. or, or in the movies, maybe yeah. not in yours. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the new TV show about? The TV show. <laughs> well, there's two. Um, one is about uh, 1930s. It's a woman based. It's based on historical figures. I really am obsessed by this period in history and about details. And it's this woman, Amy Semple McPherson, who was an evangelist. And she was the first evangelist to use radio wow. to broadcast her message. And she was hugely famous. And she disappeared for a four-week period. And people in her congregation went to look for her. And two men died in the ocean because she had uh, disappeared at the beach. And then she was discovered four weeks later stumbling out of the desert, claiming Mexicans had kidnapped her. But it turned out that her radio, the ma her radio manager, he too was missing those four weeks. Ah. <laughs> and her, the, it was a huge uproar in LA, and they took her to trial. There was a morality trial. Really? Yeah. Oh really. my goodness. So she's she's the character that I base it on, um, but it's it's really a murder mystery. Oh, I can't wait! <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Yeah. yeah. So, last thing, if there's one tip you could give to entrepreneurs that's struggling out there and mm. really wants to make a difference and you know get smacked down, what would mm. you tell them? I would say first know your craft. Do you know, I've spent two years learn, like writing, you don't just wake up one morning and write. So whatever it is you want to do, learn it, learn your craft, and then be eternally optimistic. Yeah. You know, if you know you're good, because you have to know you're good, if yeah. you know you're good, then, then you shouldn't care what other people say, and just keep trying and keep trying. And constructive criticism. My favorite thing in the whole world, to me, it's like, a, it's the best gift I can get is when someone reads something I've done or listens to something I've made and they actually give me constructive criticism. Wow. I love it. I, yeah. I, I, my ears are always open and if someone tells me I'm doing something wrong, I'll mm -hmm. listen to that. I think, I think that is one of the biggest mistakes people make. Yeah. They don't, they don't there's fantastic advice everywhere yeah. and they just don't listen. You can love yourself a little too much. Yeah, do you I know? do agree. I do agree. So open your ears. Who do you go to for criticism? Well, that's it has to be people that, that you trust. You trust. Yeah. 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 So what I find, I get, might get off track here, but what mm. I find is that sometimes I ask for criticism mm -hmm. for the people that I know already what to say. <laughs> So, no, no, so no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to people that maybe frighten you a little bit, yeah. but, but you know are good at what they do. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to take that with me. Yeah. Thank you so much to Lauren. Thank you so much for yeah. being here. Thank you. And what a fantastic your, yeah. talk. I enjoyed it. Thank you. That was Lauren Savoy. I hope you love her as much as I do and got inspired to work through those hard days. The hard days will come, but hard work is the only way to get through it. So get up there, just do it and make some magic happen.
Jeg håper du blev super inspirert til å ta nye action efter denne episoden av Grunnekanal plus mye mer. Gå nu til grysinning.no og legg gjerne en kommentar på denne episoden om hva du tar med deg. Jeg vil gjerne høre fra dig og få mer grunnetrening på skapindrømmejobb.no Glem heller ikke å abonnere så at vi treffes neste gang på Grunde Kanal plus mye mer. Ha en fantastisk dag, så høres vi.